Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And then, on your husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. You can play a vital part in the defense of our country. Radar is a wonderful invention, but it cannot completely eliminate the chance of foreign aircraft slipping through undetected. To prevent the possibility of such an unwelcome surprise, the Ground Observer Corps has been established. This volunteer organization is composed of civilians who are spending a few hours of their spare time each week sky-watching. They have been taught how to do this job by Air Force personnel who also supervise the observer's time on duty. Today, there are 49 filter centers located in 27 states to which observation posts report. All these centers and posts are manned by volunteers. When the Ground Observer Corps extends its coverage to the rest of the country, many more sky watchers will be needed. If you are a teenager or older, enroll now for service in the Ground Observer Corps in your locality. Write or phone your nearest Civil Defense Center today, or write to Ground Observer Corps... Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Help protect your country. This message is brought to you as a public service. Mary Hooker and her 10-year-old son, Ronnie, stood on the deck of the Yukon Riverboat as it eased up to the dock at Dawson City. Mary's husband had died recently, and she had come to stay with her father, Ollie Myers, who owned a claim near Dawson City. Well, Ronnie, we're here at last. Hey, it's so good to see you. Father, I was afraid you'd forgotten we were coming. Oh, this is Ronnie, your grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. Hello there, son. Great <laughs> day. I didn't expect to see such a big boy. It's hard to believe my Mary had a nice big son like you. Ronnie's been looking forward to this meeting for a long time, Father. <laughs> we'll get along, won't we, son? Oh, sorry, yes, Grandpa. Where's all the snow and ice and everything? It'll be here before long, Sonny, and plenty of it. The fact is, it'll be here too soon for me, seeing as how my claim is just beginning to pay off. I have to lay off a while when the weather gets real bad. Oh, I'm glad your claim is paying off, Father. Is it enough to cover expenses? <laughs> Heaps more than that, Mary. Heaps more. Oh? But there's no use standing here gabbing. Let's grab onto the luggage and get it to the buckboard over yonder. I hired that rig to take you out to my cabin. Come on. Don't you have a buckboard of your own? No. No use in the winter. Not much use in the summer. Mm. Except in the vicinity of town. Here we are. I figure I'm getting a good team of dogs for the coming winter. And now that I'm getting some gold to pay for them with... Oh, crazy look, flying under the buckboard. Oh, my goodness, what a dirty, raggedy-looking dog. He looks like a regular vagabond. What's a vagabond, Mom? Oh. <laughs> that's another name for a tramp. He's just a mutt that's good for nothing. You run into him here and there. Oh, Mom, Mom, look at him wagging his tail. He likes me. Here, Phyllis, come on. Here. Come on, honey, hop up on the seat. we got to get going. Look, Grandpa, I bet he's hungry. I bet he'd like a home, wouldn't you, Bag? Oh, Ronnie, come along. Grandpa's waiting. No, we can't just leave him. Oh, I wish I could take him home with us. Now, Ronnie, I... Oh, let the dog boy bring the dog if he wants to. Of course, that ragged-looking hound ain't going to be any use. But if it'll make the lad happy... Lord, Grandpa, darling, thanks. Come on, Jacobine. Come on, Phyllis. Oh, oh, oh. Just you and the dog on back of the buckboard. 
There you are. Well, at least we can get going now. Come along, Mary. I'll give you a hand. All right. Climb up. <laughs> get up. Get up. Uh, Ronnie spent every waking moment with a dog he had named Vagabond. The dog followed his little master everywhere. The two were inseparable. And though the old man considered the dog useless, he put up with him because of the happiness it brought to his grandson. One day, Sergeant Preston stopped at the cabin with King and met Mary and Ronnie, and not to mention Vagabond. Look, Sergeant Preston, Vagabond is the dog. Yes, he does, Ronnie. And King likes Vagabond. Father thinks Vagabond is useless, but the dog means so much to Ronnie. And all like Vagabond may be useless in this country, Mr. Sugar. But if he brings happiness to a small boy, he's serving his purpose in life. <laughs> Leave it to the sergeant to say something nice about any dogs or humans he meets. That's his way, Mary. I wish more people had his way, my father. You know, I'm getting sort of used to Vagabond being here now. I'd almost miss him if he were gone. Oh, won't you stay to supper, Sergeant? Why, no, thank you, Mrs. Hooker. I have to make out some reports at headquarters, but I'll stop by another time. Let's go, King. Goodbye, thank you. Bye. Bye. It was the following day that Ollie spoke of a trip he had to make. I'm going to ride over to Beaver Creek today, Mary. It's about ten miles the other side of Dawson, so I won't be back until late tonight. I want to look at the team of dogs a fellow has for sale. All right, Father. Ronnie and I will be safe enough here. Sure. Anyway, we got Vagabond to look after. Shall we, Vagabond? <laughs> that mud would scurry under the bed if he heard a noise in the night. No, no, he wouldn't, Grandpa. Well, I got to be getting on my way now. Have to stop at the bank and get some of my money out just in case I want to buy that team. I'll get back during the night, Mary. Goodbye. Goodbye, Later at the bank, Ollie took his turn at the teller's window. Well, what can I do for you, Ollie? Well, I get some money out of my account. Here's the withdrawal slip. Hmm. $300. All right, Ollie. One, two, three. There you are. Thanks, Jed. I'll soon be bringing in more to take place of this. So long. Goodbye. A short time later, a brawny, dark-haired man entered the cafe and walked to a table where another man was sitting alone. <laughs> hey, Manny. Yeah. How do you do? Just got wind of something over at the bank while I was there getting a bill change. Really? What? An old sourdough drew out 300 in cash. I heard him say he'd be putting in lots more soon. He must have struck it rich with his coin. Yeah, we could use that 300. There may be any more that he might have around someplace. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I followed him in here. He's up front standing with that crown near the end of the bar. <coughs> Let's saunter up there and see what he's talking about. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to buy me a dog team. These boys are buy it if the dogs look like they're worth having. Good idea. Saw an advertisement in the Klondike Nugget offering them for sale along with the sled. Going over to Beaver Creek later today to see about them. Well, well I'll I'll do do Come on, Manny. Let's go outside. On you and getting that go. <laughs> yeah, we can wait across the hotel until we see him leaving town. Then we can get our horses and follow him. Yeah. The trail up to Beaver Creek is a huge much. We'll be ready to leave when he does. Ollie stayed in the cafe for a couple of hours. And then in the early afternoon, he set out on horseback along the trail to Beaver Creek. Ollie rode at an easy pace. He didn't realize that a short distance behind him, Duke and Manny were following, were waiting their chance to get him in territory where they'd be sure no one would be around. Come on, get up there. Get up there. Duke spoke as they rode along. We use bandanas on our faces, Manny, so he won't recognize us. Now, uh, we can put a bullet in him and be sure about it. No, no, I have a better idea than that. From what you told me he said at the bank, I figured he's got gold hidden at his cabin. But look, Duke, if he had gold hidden at his cabin, why would he go to the bank to take out gold? Some of those old sourdoughs are strange, Manny. When they're making a deal with someone, they'd rather use paper money. They're afraid they'll get cheated if they use dust or nuggets. They know the bank is exact in weighing out gold. Well, that could be, too. Anyway, he talked like he had plenty more to take to the bank, like I told you. That's right. You can make him tell us where his cabin is and where his gold is hidden. What? I thought you knew about old sourdoughs. He wouldn't talk even if we threatened to kill him. Yeah. 
Maybe you're right. Anyway, we'll tie him up sort of loose-like. That'll give us a chance to get away. Then he'll get free. Yeah, and head right back to town for the Mollies. <laughs> sure. We'll be watching. The Mollies will send someone out here, and the old man's likely to go on home. We'll follow him again and see where his cabin is. All right, we'll do it like you say, Duke. <laughs> now he'll sure be upset being robbed twice in one evening. Get up there, boy. Get up there, boy. Get up When Ollie Miles heard the beat of hooves approaching behind him, he pulled to a stop and waited to see who it might be. Oh, 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 there, oh. Ollie turned and looked back as the two horsemen wearing bandanas over the lower part of their faces came around a bend just a short distance back. Mass bandage. I'm getting away from here. Uh, I reckon that changed my mind about leaving. Oh, 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 oh. That shot was only a warning, mister. The next one won't miss. No, no, no use you waving that shooting iron around. Just say what you want, and then let me be on the way. Reckon you don't expect to get much of anything from a broke-down old sourdough like me. We expect to get $300 from you, mister. No use lying, because we know you got it. Uh, see that? Uh, come on, Duke. Okay. Yeah, steady, boy. Now get off your horse, mister. We're taking that 300 then we're tying you up and leaving you here. <laughs> so somebody might come along in a day or two and let you go. Otherwise, anything can happen to you. Now get down. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Boy, oh boy, that was a curved pitch that would fool any batter. Say, kids, wouldn't you like to be in the ballpark and see how a star pitcher makes the ball curve right over home plate? Golly, everything about a major or minor league game is exciting. The crowds, the goodies, get in on that excitement. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you're 12 years or younger and have mom or pop with you or another paying adult. It's as easy to get a free baseball ticket as going to the grocery store. Get it right inside packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Golly, why wait? Get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, send a box top from the regular package to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. Duke and Manny, the two crooks, had followed Ollie Miles and stopped him to rob him of his $300. Manny ordered the old man to get off his horse. I said get off that horse, Sandy. Oh. That'll teach you to do what you're told when we tell you something. Search him, Manny, while I keep him covered. All right. Uh, wait, I go. Manny, here's the money, Duke. Now that's to buy a dog team for me. That's this, mister. I'll tie you up. Look. You got my money. Why don't you let me go? If you leave me tied here, a grizzly might get me. Yeah, he might have said. <laughs> Gotta hold you. Let's go, Duke. Okay. Easy. Uh, so long, sourdough. And don't trust any strangers you might meet on the trail. <laughs> yeah, get up, boy. Come on, get up here. My horse. My golly, they forgot to take my horse. You're right on the trail a bit, grazing. What good will that do me, all tied up like this? According to their plan, and unknown to Ollie, Manny had tied the noose rather loosely, so that with a bit of straining, the old man would be able to free his hands. For a short time, Ollie lay on the side of the trail, thinking bitterly of what had happened. And then he struggled against the cords, and was surprised to find them loosening. I've got to get on tight. Get away from here. By golly, the cords on my wrists are getting loose. Maybe if I try a little harder... There. Got my hands free. Now I'll untie my feet and ride to town for the constable. Maybe the mounties will trail the trucks before they get too far away. That's got him. Good thing they left my horse. Steady there, Get up there. Get up. Ollie Miles returned to Dawson and reported the robbery to the constable on duty at headquarters. Did you get a good look at the crooks, Mr. Miles? Well, I can't say as I did, constable. They wore bandanas, and I was so excited, I 
Didn't look at them too close. Uh -huh. Seems to me one of them was sort of heavy set, and the other medium set. Huh? That description isn't much help. I'll go out there and look the ground over. Maybe I can pick up the trail. You'd better come along with me. Sure. I'll show you just where it happened. All right, let's get to our horses. In a cafe across from Bounty headquarters, Manny and Duke sat at the table near the front window where they had a view of the headquarters entrance. Look, to it. The old man's riding away with the Mounty. He must be heading for the Beaver Creek Trail. Uh, we'll just have to wait till he gets back. <laughs> The Mountie won't pick up our trail because we use the extreme for a couple of miles to cover it. Maybe it's just as well he went with the Mountie. We have to supper time when they get back. And we'll follow the old man home. When Ollie and the constable finally returned to Mountie headquarters, they found Sergeant Preston and King there. Well, Sergeant Preston and King, oh, oh, oh. I was hoping you'd be here. Hello, Frank. You know Ollie Miles? Of course. Sergeant, I was robbed a while ago. Robbed? Yeah. Two ornery crooks held me up on the Beaver Creek Trail. Took three hundred dollars I was carrying to buy a dog team. They tied me up, but I, I got loose and came into the constable. We just came back from out there. I found their trail, but lost it at the creek where they went into the water. I see. Mister Miles can't describe them very well. He says they masked their faces with bandanas. That's right, they did. Maybe if you went back there with me, Sergeant, and took King along, we could find the trail again along the creek. All right, we're ready to leave right away if you want. Sure. Coming with us, Mr. Miles? Well, don't reckon I'll go along this time. I, I'm i plumb tuckered out with the riding and excitement and all. You'd better go on home, Ollie. We'll do what we can to find those cooks and get your money back. I sure hope you do. Get going, Frank. Right. Come along, King. Oh, 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 oh. Manny and Duke were still watching when the two Mounties and Ollie left headquarters. Look, Duke. Just come right out again. We have another Mountie with them. Hey, that's not just another Mountie. Sergeant Preston and his dog. Well, what about it? I've heard a lot about those two. I don't like the idea of them getting in on this. Ah, oh, forget it. What difference does it make as long as we cover our trail? The dog's mighty good at trailing, I hear. Ah, even a dog can't trail in the water. Well, I'm begging you right at that. Look, there they go. Heading for Beaver Creek Trail. Yeah, but the old sourdough's not going with him. Look, he's heading the other way. Must be going home. Well, this is what we're waiting for. Come on, let's go. It didn't take long for Sergeant Preston and the constable to reach the point along the creek where the two crooks had entered the water. Hold on. The hoof marks of their two horses were clearly visible in the damp earth along the creek bank. And Sergeant Preston pointed to them, at the same time speaking to King. Find them, King. Fine, fellow. <laughs> The intelligent dog sniffed the trail left by the crooks. And then as the two Mounties sat in their saddles watching, the great dog moved along the bank of the stream, sniffing and whining. The scent left by the crooks and their horses clung to the bushes along the bank. And since there was no wind, King was able to pick it up. He barked to indicate he had found the trail. King's found their scent, Frank, and he's heading along the stream toward town. Let's go. Get up, Get up there. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a home run! Hooray for our team! Golly, kids, baseball games are a lot of fun, aren't they? He smashed that ball right out of the ballpark, and that puts our team ahead. Gee, I wouldn't miss seeing this game for anything. Say, are you fellas and girls getting in on the fun? Well, come on. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Get your free baseball tickets right inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, or Muffet Shredded Wheat. And two free tickets are inside Quaker Pack of Ten. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. If you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see major or minor league baseball games free. So rush to the grocery store. Get free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Pack of Ten. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, send a box top in the regular package to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Go to the ball game free. See home run hitters in person. Meantime, Ollie arrived at his cabin where Ronnie and his mother were waiting. Well, Father, you're back sooner than I expected. Did you buy the key, Grandpa, did you? 
No, I got held up and robbed. Oh, huh? Briefly, Ollie told them what had happened, and that the Mounties were hunting the crooks. Terrible. But then we're lucky they didn't harm you. At least we have that to be thankful for. I bet Sergeant Preston and King will find them. I'm sure hoping they do. Someone's stopping outside. Maybe it's the Mounties. Well, it couldn't be then, unless they decided not to go out to find the trail of the crooks. I'll see who it is. Great day. Same again. The cooks. Get inside and shut up. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Did you see that mutt beat it under the table? Look scared to death. Vagabond isn't scared at all. Sick of vagabond. Here we go. Don't count on help from that no good hound, Ronnie. What are you coming here for? You robbed me once today, so there's nothing else for you to get. Shut up and sit down. Oh, take it easy. You let him alone. You ought to be ashamed of yourself picking on an old man. Stop your gabbing, lady, and sit yourself in that other chair pronto. Go on. Oh, that, that gun. Please, I am both the chairs, Duke. Okay, it won't take a minute. I brought some more cord with me. Hey, what, what's this all about? We know you got gold hidden around here someplace, and you're going to tell us where it is. Who said I got gold hidden here? <coughs> uh, this side. Listen, old timer. You better tell us about the gold or you'll be sorry. Tie the woman now, Duke. Oh, yeah, sure. Please, please don't tie us like this. Haven't you done enough by robbing my father? Shut without... up. Oh, there. She takes us. Now, old timer, where's your gold hit? I've already told you there isn't any. Stop it. Oh, stop, stop it, you hear? Oh. Maybe he'll talk if we knock you around a little, seeing as how you're his daughter. Wait. Don't touch her. I'll tell you. I do have a little gold hit here. It's in a box in the cupboard. Yeah, that's more like it. I'll get it in a minute. Hey, Manny, grab that kitty trying to stick out the door. Come back there, you. You little sneak. I'll teach you a lesson you won't forget. As Ronnie struggled to get away from Maddie and cried out, Vagabond, the dog that had crawled under the table, looked out. He saw his little master in trouble and forgot his fear. With a deep growl, he sprang at Manny. Get him away. Go, do something. As Manny turned to ward off the dog's attack, Ronnie quickly slipped out the front door. Duke jumped forward and raising his gun, brought the gun butt down against Vagabond's head. That stopped him. Vagabond fell to the floor and lay still. Manny stood for a moment looking himself over to see if he'd been hurt. He suddenly looked up as he heard a voice outside. The kid, he's getting away on one of our horses. Uh, he got too far away for me to wing him. Yeah, but he took one of the horses. Uh, so what? One of us can use the old man. Let's get back inside and grab that gold. Then we'll hit the trail south. That kid will go to the Mountie so we can't waste any time. Come on. King had led Sergeant Preston and the constable to the cafe across from Mountie headquarters. He had just pulled to a stop... Ronnie reached out. In the brightness of the Yukon evening, they saw the boy approaching on the horse. Well, that's Ollie Miles' grandson, Ronnie. Yeah, that kid sure knows how to ride. Oh, 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 Sergeant, they tied up Mom's brain. They came to get the gold. Take it easy, Ronnie. <clears throat> who are you talking about? Two outlaws. Grandpa says they're the same ones who robbed him today. Huh? I got away to vagabond, saw one of them hurting me. The vagabond jumps at the cook. I'll look at the one of their horses. We'd better get right out there, Frank. Come on, gang. I'm coming to you. Get up. Get up. When they arrived at the cabin, the Mounties untied Ollie and Mary, while Ronnie bent cheerfully over his injured dog, Vagabond. <laughs> Let me look at him, Ronnie. Huh? Blow on the side of the head. I think he'll be all right with a little care. Vagabond. Goodbye, it's me, Ronnie. <laughs> Look, he opened his eyes. I'll take care of the dog, Sergeant. I know you want to trail those men. Yes, we do, Mrs. Hooker. We'll bring them by here for identification when we catch them. Let's go, Frank. Come along, King. <laughs> it was easy to pick up the trail of Manny and Duke. The two Mounties and King were gone for about two hours. Finally, they returned and stopped in front of the captain. Manny and Duke, both of them showing the results of the fight which had ended in their capture, were looking very much subdued. Duke's arm was in a swing. Come on, get inside. What's the Sergeant, you got him. Yes, Sally, we found both your cash and your gold in their possession. Get in there. They tried to ambush us from behind the ridge, but they were just a little too far from the trail. Sergeant Preston sneaked closer through the brush and wounded one of them. 
Then he sent King to circle around and get the other. Those are the two men, all right. Yes, he sure are. Oh. He even vagabond recognized him, even though he's lying there with his head bandaged. <laughs> Bird Thunder Vagabond really saved the day for us. You should have seen him spring at that crook when he put his hands on Ronnie. I knew Vagabond would make good, Ollie. A dog is always loyal to those who are kind to him. Yeah. Now I'm going to buy him a fancy collar as a present. <laughs> and from now on, Vagabond is going to get a special treatment from around here. Oh, golly. I'm sure glad you like him, old Grandpa. I'm glad, too, Ronnie. Well, Frank, we'll take these two cooks back to town. Thanks to Vagabond, and of course to Ronnie, this case is closed. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The warm weather and long daylight hours mean more fun out of doors, especially for the younger members of the family. But sometimes it's not possible to be outside, or it's important to relax and sit quietly for a little while. Then is the time to tune to Mutual. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, there are programs of imaginative entertainment that bring all of the adventure and excitement of the wide open spaces. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, member of the famed Northwest Mounted Police, braves the dangers of a wild and lawless territory in the days when gold was king. With his faithful dog, Yukon King, Sergeant Preston is a challenging example of courage and daring. And following Sergeant Preston every day, Monday through Friday, is Bobby Benson. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, the doors open wide on a whole world of adventure with Sergeant Preston of the Yukon and Bobby Benson both on Mutual over most of these stations. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Inspector, I'd like to take a run out to Grand Ledge. In the line of duty, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Urgent duty, sir. What's happened? Skagway Bill headed in that direction. I've just learned that he was a witness to Jim Turner's murder. By all means, get after him, Sergeant. As fast as you can. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Preston heads west toward the mountains into the wild and desolate country around Grand Ledge where the terrible grizzlies roam the tangled forest. Killers in human form are lurking there as well and the sergeant faces death from man and beast. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.